Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with another really fun Halloween card. So to start off with, I pulled out this older stamp set from Trinity Stamps. This is the Slim Slimline Booze stamp set. This came out, I think this was last year's release. I already did a video on it last year as part of my Halloween release. Had to own it, bought it, loved it. So I'm working in my memory Misty. This is the big mama misty this thing is huge it's like 12 by 12 do not have space for it on my desk i only pull it out when i need to because it's just ginormous but i needed it for what i planned to do which was a bit of double masking i don't even know what you would call this but i'm going to be creating two masks in one and you'll see why so i laid out the stamp and i just stamped onto this heavy doodle memo tape because i don't need a huge mask i just need the area that i'm showing so i inked up the stamp doesn't matter what ink stamped onto the mask and then i just carefully cut around basically the top full row of ghosts because what i wanted was an image that is taller than what this stamp is like i want a full background and normally i wouldn't go to like I'm not gonna do a ton of detail fussy cutting, but this was simple. <laughs> like it's a row of ghosts. So I'm just like cutting, you know, cutting along the, the circles, you know, or the, the oval shapes, whatever. And I'm being careful with my cutting because I want the top portion of this and the bottom portion. And again, you'll see why. So I just went along. This was really easy to do. I just used my little scissors and just cut along this row of ghosts. And then the actual mask, like the row of ghosts, I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to use that in a second. So I've got that piece and then I have this top portion. So I'm going to use some of Ranger's heavy stock for this. And it's cut to about four and a half by six and a half because I plan on making a five by seven card. Hence, you can see this stamp because it's slimline sized will not fill this entire card. So to make that work, I've lined it up along the, like to start at the bottom and then I'm using that reverse mask, like the top portion, as you can see, and I'm kind of taping it into place because I have the sticky side facing up and all this is going to do is mask off again, the area at the very top of the stamp above the solid ghosts. And again, this will make sense in a second. So that part's masked off. That just makes my life easier. So I can go along with my ink pad and ink it up. I'm not going to get a perfect perfect inking with this. I'm not concerned about it. If I was, I would just re-stamp it like twice, hence the beauty of the Misty. But I just wanted to get it stamped because I'm going to be adding like splatter and all the things anyway. But I removed that mask. And so I've got this row of ghosts. And then all I've got to do is use the other, like the actual mask. I can mask off that top area, move my panel down, and then re-stamp. And that way I'm going to get a full background. So I'll end up doing this a second time on the inside of the card as well. But this accomplished what I was going for, which was I wanted a full background of all these little ghosts. And I had inked it up with, I can't remember if I already said that, but Vintage Photo Distress Oxide Ink since it's water reactive and I purposely stamped this onto heavy stock, I can now go in with a, just a wet paintbrush. I'm not adding anything other than just water, but this kind of reactivates those inks and I can just add. That's all I'm doing. It just adds kind of my whole point, which you saw from the photo and the um, thumbnail of this video. I was thinking coffee theme. And as I was like adding the water, I was like, oh, it was just what I was starting to picture in my head was just coming to life. And I was having so much fun. I was like, this looks like it's been painted with coffee. <laughs> so again, it's not perfect, but I'm not worried about that. Like this is just the background. This isn't the main focus of the card. Although this is what ended up in kind of inspiring this and the die cuts and just all of it. It all just started playing off each other. So I just went along with my little wet paintbrush and just kind of went around the outlines and it starts pulling that distress oxide ink out a little bit and then i've got that little bit of extra color etc and then i will again add to this a bit more later on so once i went along and did all of these little ghosts with the wet paintbrush i decided i was like oh this needs some coffee rings and splatter you know all the fun things so i showed in a video not too long ago a way to add faux 
coffee rings because I can't paint a circle to save my life. This time I'm going big and using my literal actual coffee mug <laughs> that I have sitting here most often. This my, and my mug is enormous. I know I'm well aware and it's perfect, but I just smushed the vintage photo oxidating. I just used the, the lid of my Misty. You could use whatever's non-porous. Sprayed it with water, pressed the mug into it, pressed the mug onto my background. Coffee rings. Done. Love it. Last time I did this, I just used my Distress Sprayer bottle and used the bottom of the bottle. You could use anything. An actual coffee mug, any sort of round container to, you know, experiment, see what happens. It's fun. So while I have this like mess on the top of my Misty, I was also picking that up with my paintbrush and splattering it. And then I also kind of painted along these coffee rings to again, like, you know, adding more mess, adding more splatter, that sort of, you know, that more loose sort of a look, just simple. And you can kind of see it in the photo at the end, like that's the other part of using uh, an oxide ink to do this is because how they, you know, oxidize and react with water. It just looks neat and it looks more realistic, like actual coffee rings. So I set that aside to dry. And while I have my big monster memory misty out, I'm going to do the inside of the card. Because again, this thing, I, I, don't, I literally don't have space on my work surface. If I had a bigger desk, you'd see, you guys would see me use this thing like all the time. But I can barely make this fit on my desk. Because you think like it's 12 by 12 and then when the lid open, it's huge. It's huge. So my card base, like I said, it's going to be a five by seven card. So this is Nina Desert Storm cardstock. So I'm going to do the same thing on the inside of the card. So I used my little reverse mask again and just kind of taped it into place to mask off that little top portion of the stamp. And then this time I'm inking it up with Simon's khaki ink because that's just my go-to with Desert Storm. I could have used the vintage photo again, but I like the khaki ink on the inside of my cards when I use Desert Storm cardstock. So I did the same thing. It didn't stamp perfectly. I'm not too concerned. So I used my mask to mask off that top area moved the card base down so that I can stamp with the rest of the stamp. And because I don't want to go past the score line, I'm going to just apply more masking paper right at the score line just to keep things looking a little cleaner, you know? So once I had everything sort of lined up so I know it's not going to stamp past either of the masks, then I can ink up the stamp a second time with that khaki ink and then close the lid of my Misty press that down, remove the masks, and I've got another background, full background with all the little the little ghosties on the inside of my card as well, which is just so much fun. <laughs> so then I'm getting into the main focus of these. So I pulled out the Trinity Stamps Hello Beautiful Wafer Dyes. And I only used the word hello and then the to full. I got rid, I didn't die cut the boo. I was originally. And then I was like, wait a minute. If I use alphabet dies, I can customize it to say hello, brutiful. <laughs> I'm just, I was just like, I'm just a genius. Every once in a while it strikes. But anyway, so I die cut the word, the letters B-R-E-W from some dark brown cardstock with uh, Trinity's marshmallow alphabet. And then everything was die cut multiple times and then stacked all those layers together with craft hacky glue to give it the dimension that I love. And then the main focus was the Trinity Stamps Boo Brew die set that I just showed in the Trinity Autumn release and review video that I was like losing my mind over. <laughs> so I die cut the cup from some orange cardstock and then I die cut the little pumpkin face from it and then die cut the pumpkin face a second time from black cardstock. And then I'm just inlaying them together. You could actually skip that and just die cut the cup and then die cut the pumpkin face from black and adhere on top, whatever floats your boat. I just decided to inlay it. And I did this twice with everything because I wanted one for the outside and one for the inside of the card. And then the ghosts I die cut from more just heavy stock and then the face die cut from black cardstock, inlaid those as well. And then once those were inlaid, I'm just using my same little um, yellow spellbinders tape to adhere those pieces behind. Just quick, simple, easy. And then all my other little elements I had die cut from various card stocks. And once everything was assembled, I'm going to add a little bit of ink blending to my ghosts. I'm going to use a bit of vintage photo ink and one of my little Simon blender brushes. 
And I'm working on Simon's grid paper here because I want to rub off the first bit of ink when I pick it up from the ink pad. Because I don't want these ghosts to be like brown. I just, I wanted that little bit. I was thinking, you know, lattes and all that kind of stuff. So I did that light blending on the edges of those. And then for the actual pumpkin cups themselves, I used Crackling Campfire Distress Ink. That I did a heavier hand with because Crackling Campfire is just, oh, it's such a deep, intense orange. I love it. So I blended that around the cups and then I pulled out Rustic Wilderness Ink and I'm going to lightly blend that onto the little leaves that I had die cut from some green cardstock. Because again, it just gives it that little extra bit of dimension. So I pulled out the Rustic Wilderness and then my two little die cut leaves and another little blending brush and then blended those. And then off camera, I had kind of assembled everything on my like ghost background. And I found that a lot of it was just everything was lost because that background is very busy. You know, it's fabulous, but it's busy. And it was just, I needed to figure out a way to make this work. Because I was like, I'm not not using this background because I was so happy with how it turned out. But I'm like, I need to tone it down without ruining it. <laughs> so I took a larger blending brush and I mixed uh, old paper and vintage photo distress inks. And just lightly blended over this background with those. So, you know, it tones it down a little bit. And I was like, okay, this is working, you know, without covering these ghosts or, you know, messing it up. And then I took the vintage photo and I blended it a little bit more just around the edges. And I was liking how that was working. So then I'm going to pull out a bit of ground espresso distress ink and blend that just along the edges, just to kind of darken it a little bit. And again, without completely covering up anything, you know, you can still see all the ghosts and the coffee rings and the splatter. So I just went around and blended that using my blender brush. And then once I was kind of satisfied with darkening that so that the lettering is gonna stand out a bit more and the little ghost coming out of the coffee cup, that sort of thing, cause it really was just like lost. So this is one way to kind of make everything work. So once I was happy with all of that, then I can get to, you know, doing all the assembly and fun stuff. So the cup and the ghost, I used just some thin 3D foam squares to pop those up with a little bit of dimension. And then everything else I'm just going to adhere with little bits of craft tacky glue. So I'd die cut the little like pumpkin stem and kind of stuck that in the corner and then the little leaf and then the little spider that hangs from the cup. Love it, love it. So got those adhered. And then my sentiments, which this is also why I had to go with a five by seven card, because as I was like building this card in my head and then actually like laying out the dies, et cetera, et cetera, sort of like just how big everything was. <laughs> so it wasn't really going to fit on a standard A2 size card. So I've got my um, sentiments here and I'm just adhering those with craft tacky glue. So just holding that down until it's adhered. And then um, I actually had to walk away you know, deal with a few things, come back. I thought I had the brew word like adhered. <laughs> so I started healing the hello and I was like, oh yeah, no, it wasn't. So got the hello adhered and then adhere the letters again with craft tacky glue. So now it says hello, beautiful. And then the dot for the eye, I just adhered those individually so much easier than sitting and like, I just think of all the time I've wasted in the past, you know, stacking these on their own and then adhering them to a card. It's so much easier to just adhere like directly to the card base. So did that. And then for my little sentiment on the inside, it's just the trick or drink stamp set. And I use the trick or drink sentiment, stamp that onto the inside with um, Nocturne ink, and then adhered the cup and ghost elements around that. So same exact same sort of layout here as I did on the front of the card. It just couldn't resist adding the second set on the inside. Cause again, it's a five by seven card. There's plenty of space for that. So adhered all my little elements. And then once those were adhered, I'm going to coat the back of the card front with Simon's Big Mama foam tape. So that'll adhere it good as well as give it that little bit of dimension without making it super bulky. So cover the back with that, peel off the backing. I'm going to adhere this to my card base. And then I am of course going to add some of Trinity Stamps Coffee Bean Heart Sprinkles. I've used these in a bajillion videos. I think this was actually one of the very first Trinity products I ever purchased was these Coffee Bean Heart Sprinkles. I'm almost positive that's the first thing I ever got. 
Anyway, I only put a few because I just thought they'd be kind of cute. Plus they're, you know, they're called coffee bean. They're the right color. They're just meant to be. So I'm going to adhere those into place with dabs of craft tacky glue. And that finishes off this really fun card. I had so much fun making this and just, you know, it's one of those things where the idea in your head when it translates and everything works out and it's like, yes, this was so fun. And as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I'll have picture links to everything I used. All that info will be in the description box below if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing, thumbs up and commenting. I very much appreciate it. And I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.